This video deals with the important topic of comparing heterogeneous samples. The situation we're dealing with is when data have been collected from M different populations. We wish to compare the means mu1, mu2, up to mu sub m. We'll be asking two questions. First, are the means all equal? If not, which means are significantly different from which other means? The kicker here, though, is that we are not willing to assume that the standard deviations of the populations are all the same. As an example, I've loaded into the Stack Graphics data sheet measurements I've made on material received from three suppliers. If I scroll down a bit, you'll notice that the number of samples varies from one supplier to the next. There are 30 samples for supplier 1, 40 samples for supplier 2, and 38 samples for supplier 3. To compare the samples, I'll go to the top menu, select Compare, Multiple Samples, Multiple Sample Comparison. The first thing I need to do is indicate how the data are structured. In this case, they've been placed in multiple data columns, one for each sample. The samples are Supplier 1, Supplier 2, and Supplier 3. I'll start by simply asking for an analysis summary and a scatter plot. When the window opens, you'll notice in the analysis summary the range of the measurements for each of the samples. And in the right hand pane, a scatter plot. To see all the observations a little bit better, I'll go to the analysis toolbar and press the jitter button. I'll add just a little bit of horizontal jitter to minimize the overplotting and press OK. You see what appears to be significant difference in the variability between supplier 1, supplier 2, and supplier 3. The major question of interest though is are the means of the three suppliers significantly different and if so, which means are different from which others? The most common approach for comparing the means of multiple populations assumes equal variances within each population. In such a case, we start by performing a one-way analysis of variance. We look at the F-test in the ANOVA table which compares the between sample variation to the within sample variation. If the F test indicates that there are significant differences amongst the means, then we run a post hoc comparison such as Fisher's LSD procedure, Tukey's HSD, or perhaps Duncan or Student Newman Cools. If we can't assume equal variances within each of the populations, an alternative is to replace the F-test in the ANOVA table with one of two tests, the Welsh test or the brown Forsyth test. We can then use the Games-Howell procedure to do our post hoc comparisons. The Games-Howell procedure doesn't assume equal variances within each population. And it's also appropriate when, as in this case, you have unequal number of observations within each group. These tests and the games Howell procedure are new in Stack Graphics Centurion version 17. Returning to Stack Graphics, I'm now going to ask for additional output. I'm going to press the Tables and Graphs button on the Analysis toolbar and ask for an ANOVA table, multiple range tests, and a variance check. This will add additional text panes to my analysis window. The text pane labeled ANOVA table shows the standard one-way analysis of variance. 
which assumes equal standard deviations in each of the groups. Notice that the p-value in the ANOVA table is well below 0.05, indicating significant differences amongst the supplier means at the 5% significance level. Before I put too much stock in that p-value, though, I need to go down to the pane labeled Variance Check. Here, Levine's test is used to test the hypothesis that all the population standard deviations are the same. Since Levine's p-value is well below 0.05, I must reject the idea that there are identical standard deviations in each population. At this point, I'll go back to the ANOVA table, press the right mouse button, and go to pane options. Here I can choose either Welsh's test or the brown Forsyth test as an alternative to the ANOVA. Notice that Welsh's test has a p-value. The p-value is interpreted the same way as the p-value in the ANOVA table. Since it's well below 0.05, it indicates that the supplier means are significantly different at the 5% level. If I press the right mouse button, go back and choose brown Forsyth test, you'll notice that the p-value is still well below 5%. What this indicates is that the supplier means are not all the same. To determine which means are significantly different from which others, I'll now go to the multiple range tests pane. By default, the multiple range test performed is Fisher's LSD procedure. That's only appropriate, though, if the standard deviations are equal within each population. To change that, I'll press the right mouse button, go to pane options, and you'll see the new version 17 option for Games Howl. I'll now press OK and the output will update. The important output here includes a table of contrasts. This table compares the means of each pair of suppliers. Supplier 1 with supplier 2, supplier 1 with supplier 3, and supplier 2 with supplier 3. The asterisk in the significance column indicates that the only pair of means that are significantly different are supplier 1 with supplier 3. There's also a table at the top of homogeneous groups. Homogeneous groups are groups within which there are no significant differences between the means. It turns out in this case that supplier 1 and supplier 2 are not significantly different. Supplier 2 and supplier 3 are not significantly different. Overall, I can claim a significant difference between supplier 1 and supplier 3. I don't really have enough data, however, to make a call on supplier 2. These changes to the multiple sample comparison procedure are very helpful when you need to compare several groups of data that have different levels of variability.